Hello and welcome to the OFC 2024 show wrap up. My name is Phil Harvey. I'm an editor at Light Reading. I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> Kelsey Sizer, also an editor at Light Reading. And Kelsey, uh, what do you want to talk about first? There's a lot going on at this show. AI, woohoo! That, that was it. <laughs> that's, uh, <Can't> see. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the summary. No, it's, it's interesting. Well, I mean, AI did kind of influence nearly every conversation that we had at the show, which is interesting uh, because it, it did give everybody, uh, you know, a sense of optimism. Uh, we're building toward problems that are coming, haven't, you know, haven't arrived yet. Uh, big, hard technical problems that need to be solved both inside and outside the data center. Um, faster speed optics are going to get us there, but how do we get, you know, can we get enough fiber? Can we, you know, can we keep the uh, data center cool enough? Can we uh, put these data centers in places where they won't use as much power? <laughs> yeah, and I think Some making pretty those big questions. connections between uh, the AI clusters within the data center mm -hmm. is a challenge as well. Like you said, the um, distances. There was a lot of discussion too about power consumption, mm -hmm. yeah. which will also play a role in uh, with AI. And I think LPO was the lower power pluggables was uh, something that came up a lot as yeah. well. And um, having a different approach versus having the um, DSP in the pluggable. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's still wrapping my head around all of it, and it's I, I think it's still pretty new as well. Yeah, it, it, this is a cutting edge technology, and that's what's interesting about this show in general is that it's 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 geared to talk about you know the componentry the the stuff that's coming up and you know it hasn't been built for the most part hasn't been built into systems isn't in the market just yet but it's right around the corner um, just like a lot of the AI applications you know obviously um, we're not at the AI inference phase where we need answers right away as close to the user as possible but we're building toward that and that's where the d data center discussion got really interesting was um, having to uh, you know hyperscalers talking about needing data centers uh, on you know built farther apart not because of uh, you know, real estate issues, but because of power grid issues. You right. Know? Um, and putting them on, you know, separate, literally separate power grids because they're so power hungry. And then that causes a challenge for, uh, you know, the inside the data center because of density. They need to get more, more and more fiber in there to connect uh, between AI clusters, like you were saying. And then outside the data center, they have to go longer distances. So they have to make sure that that can happen without uh, tons of loss. And it has to, you know, be in a, uh, I guess, a form factor that carriers are comfortable with, you know, that they already use in their long haul networks. So there's quite, qu quite a few, uh, uh, you know, challenges remaining, but that's what seemed to dominate the discussion uh, was just, just kind of getting ready for AI seems to be driving a lot of it, uh, of this. And um, what, what I, the only thing I've really kind of heard about in terms of AI applications that people are already sort of taking advantage of have been mostly pinpoint um, solutions around corporate efficiency. So, uh, you know, coding, uh, you know, coding faster, spotting errors, uh, improving, uh, you, uh, I guess, network maintenance yeah. and things like that. I did see a demo uh, with Nokia where they were showing uh, on their within their Wave Suite umbrella an AI application where it would uh, send you alerts and then give you the option to respond with natural language if you mm -hmm. want to uh, turn off that alarm or do something else. And they were saying, you could do it from the golf course or wherever. <laughs> and I was like, well, how is that secure? <laughs> but, right. You know, make sure that the right people have access to it um, yeah. uh, from the get go and then it, there's also another layer of security in that you couldn't tell it hey go shut the whole system down right the ai would recognize that hey that, that doesn't sound right this is my ai impersonation that's a good yeah <laughs> right <laughs> i'm not programmed to take that uh, and then it would also even show you um kind of the steps that it took to arrive at the the troubleshooting notification that mm. it sent you so it kind of shows its work yeah uh, which was interesting too yeah so you can manage that all over email yeah that's cool there's there's some there's some uh up and coming applications but like you know like we're sort of seeing it's like they're there it's very very new in that phase of it and most of the stuff that i heard about was mostly was kind of i would say 
uh, back office stuff. You know, it was stuff that was sort of helping processes that are already already happening inside of companies. They're just helping them get to market faster or spot some errors on the assembly line or things like that, which are going to be, you know, huge when rolled out to other industries. But at the moment, it's it's not there yet. So it's it's stuff we're building toward, uh, I guess, for uh, uh, for the years to come. I also saw some quantum key security demos mm. that were pretty interesting with yeah. both Nokia and Sienna about instead of using, um, if I understand it right, an algorithm to generate the key, you use uh, photonics and it's more secure, but then you're limited by, I think they said 100 kilometer hmm. distance. Okay. Uh, so it kind of depends on what the um, end customer wants, uh, you know, if they're okay with that. Uh, distance location. Right. Uh, so there's, I guess there's like a heated debate within <laughs> quantum <laughs> yeah. key security yeah. as well. Uh, well, that's, yeah, that's that's another sort of emerging, uh, emerging application, emerging market that's going to kind of uh, kick off uh, once they figure out the technical bits and then who's going to manufacture it. Um, right. We also saw the uh, OIF demo, which a big, big interoperability demo um, with multiple vendors, uh, you know, for, I guess the takeaway from that is that you know there that that there's qu quite a lot of um, uh, different ways to arrive at the same sort of type of transmission, but it it, it really does come down to uh, what the buyer's preferences are. You know, what what company do they believe can manufacture what they need at scale? Um, you know, quickly enough and make it interoperate with the stuff that uh, that they have already. But it was a pretty a, a, a pretty impressive demo overall. We'll probably write about that uh, a, a bit later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Any other uh, uh, takeaways from the show? Uh, coffee, not great. <laughs> but that's pretty much every conference. Typical trade show. Um, yeah. <laughs> but we, we have had a lot more sunshine than yes. most conferences, so that's really nice. Yes, indeed. Yeah, the uh, location's hard to beat. So I think we'll, uh, we'll leave it there and we'll sign off from San Diego. Yes. Stay classy, San Diego. <laughs>